this question can't apply to Leon because you played for Everton, but how hard, Grant, is it to come to Goodison Park and play, particularly as someone that's hardly played in England whatsoever? I'm just trying to give credit to him because he seemed to boss everything. Today. Well, it's one of them old-fashioned environments in the Premier League where there's, there's not many stadiums like it now, where it's a, an environment where it's tight, it, compact on you, the, the atmosphere here is always very good. So if you're ever going to be tested, it's going to be on the day like today. So um, to go and perform the way he did was a huge credit to him. Do you know what, though? He's a, he's a really good footballer, so he trusts himself to play anywhere. Yeah. He can take the ball anywhere. He's very confident in his own ability that you can see whether the crowd are screaming at him or there's three or four players around him, he'll still take the ball in difficult positions. And he always wants it. Once yeah. he's laid it off, he's then demanding it straight back. And those are great characters to have in your team that will take the ball no matter where you are in the field. The thing he's got as well, he's got real quality to, to go with it. And as I say, he's, uh, I, I've been so impressed with him since he's joined Manchester United. Can you imagine if he'd actually signed last summer when he was linked heavily to Manchester United, but they pulled the plug at the time? If, well, where they could be this season? Well, you never know. For me, it looks like he's probably one of the missing links that Manchester United have been missing. That Paul Scholes, Michael Carrick kind of player in the middle of the park who can land on the ball, see a pass forward. It's what Man United have desperately needed, and you can see by his vision, the way he takes the ball in tight areas and sees a pass, I'm sure he'll be huge for Man United going forward. Well, if anyone's going to help coach him, Michael Carrick, if you're comparing him to him, well, Carrick's on the training ground every day. Have you come across a player, or who jumps to mind, for somebody that's come to the Premier League and just instantly taken like a duck to water, as you say? Oh, there's a lot of players that have done that, you know, going back to when players were signed in my era, I'd say David Silva, Sergio Aguero were two that you came out, you, you saw that they'd signed for Manchester City and you thought, I wonder if these will be able to hit the heights that they expect and instantly, you know, they went on to, to, to be outstanding players and continue to do so to this day. So there are an awful lot that are very successful instantly and there are an awful lot that aren't. What about with you playing alongside you here at Goodison Park? Oh, my memory's not that good from the top <laughs> of my head. Um, <laughs> You know, I always think that any player that manages to stay in the, in the Premier League is, and play for a number of years is, is showing their quality. Stephen Pienaar came over. We didn't know an awful lot about him at the time, and he ended up staying for a number of years and playing absolutely outstanding. Your Cahills, your, your Fellaini's, etc. as well, obviously had a huge impact. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say Fellaini as well, because he came from a, a different league. The likes of Cahill stepped up. He was playing in, in the English game. Yeah before, so the step up was, was a different one. He'd already experienced what this type of football is like. So um, it's for people coming from a different league, from a different culture that managed to hit the ground running. That's, that's impressive. But to sh on the other side of it, to tell you how difficult it is, we know what happened with De Bruyne at Chelsea, Salah at Chelsea. That just goes to show you what the Premier League is and how hard it is to take to it straight away. I mean, them two have probably arguably been two of the best players in the Premier League this season, yep. but yet they've had tough times in previous years. What about yourself? Was there ever a teammate that came from overseas and you thought, well, not so sure about him, but straight away, class? Oh, difficult. Uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. It's difficult, <laughs> isn't it? Um, you play for a number of clubs, yeah. so you know, you've, got, yeah, yeah. you've got quite a few options. There were a few there. <laughs> we were all struggling, though, in the clubs I played for. No, but uh, I think the, when I was a young player, the one player that came and took the place, absolutely lit the place up when I was really young, was uh, Christoph Dugary when he came to Birmingham. He was phenomenal when he came and he lifted the whole club, clawed us away from the relegation zone and he was, um, he was fantastic, a World Cup winner with France and um, he grabbed the bull by the horns, as you, as you like to say, and he was phenomenal. It's amazing what an impact a single signing can make, perhaps just with the aura or also, in the case of Everton, a manager. Just, it just spreads out like that. Yeah, and you know, that's what you want. So the owners and the, the managers, whoever, bring these people into the club, they want that instant reaction. They want the feel of everyone else wants to now come and play for that club. We're talking with, I was thinking with Bruno Fernandes as he, we were talking about him. What he now needs is Manchester United to be signing players of similar, similar ilk, similar players of quality that, and you start building a team around it with Everton, Carlo Ancelotti, his aura and his reputation will draw players to come and play for yeah. Everton and that's how you're constantly improving your team.